Welcome to another video. I got a request to do a video on how to find the eigenvectors of a matrix. However, I tried to make it a little bit more interesting, so I chose a matrix that has complex entries. So this basically means that the field of the inputs is the complex field. That's just it, just that we're going to have complex numbers in our calculation and most likely in our answer. So, how do you find the eigenvectors of any matrix? The first thing to do is to find the eigenvalues first. Then you use the eigenvalues to find the eigenvectors from the matrix. So, how do you find your eigenvalues? Well, you have to remember that the determinant, you have to remember this, that the determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to zero. Okay. Now we have to multiply lambda, which is our eigenvalue, by i to make it easy to subtract from a matrix. You can't subtract numbers from matrices. You have to subtract two matrices. So to make things easy, we decided to multiply by the identity matrix which for two by two, which doesn't change anything. So that's the idea of this i being there. It doesn't change anything. And how do we find eigenvectors? Let me write the other equation. We know that after you found your eigenvalue, we know that this determinant is equal to zero. We also know that the relationship between an eigenvalue, a, a matrix and its eigenvalue. So if you take a matrix, you multiply a vector. It is the same thing as using just one number to multiply that vector instead of using the entire matrix. So there's a number, this, that's the beauty of eigenvalues. This eigenvalue represents the entire matrix, just one number. That's why getting eigenvalues makes your life easy. You don't have to do a lot of matrix multiplication. You just multiply by one number. Okay, so with this, if we try to solve for V to know what this is, because now we have the matrix, we're gonna get this first. We just wanna know what V is because this V is particular to this eigenvalue. So if we move everything to one side, we're gonna have A minus lambda I multiplied by V will be equal to zero. Move everything to one side. So we're gonna end up still using what we have here, but now we're gonna be multiplying by a vector, which is the eigenvector, and the equation is gonna be equal to zero. So let's get into the video. Like I said, the first thing to find will be the eigenvalues, okay? There, there will be definitely two eigenvalues because it is a two by two matrix. Okay, if it was a three by three matrix, there'll be three eigenvalues. So here, let me rule this out. So the first thing we're gonna do is this. We know that the determinant, so I'm just gonna go straight to the work. The determinant of I minus this lambda so we're gonna do the subtraction because this one is only on the main diagonal. There are no entries on other parts. We're gonna have one, and here's gonna be two, and this would be negative i minus lambda. So we're subtracting lambda from the, from the main diagonal. That's what you always do. To, that's the only place you can subtract them, okay? Because remember, this guy only has entries on the main diagonal. So only here would you have lambda and here. And we know this determinant is supposed to be equal to zero. So what's the determinant of a two by two matrix? You multiply this way and you subtract this way. So we're gonna have i minus lambda multiplied by negative i minus lambda, and it's gonna be minus two times one, which is two, and you get your answer to be zero. So let's solve this. So we're gonna have, if we distribute this, we're gonna have i times negative i is gonna be, remember that i times i is negative one. So negative i squared is going to be 1. This is 1. Okay, so we have 1. Then we're going to go i times negative lambda is going to be negative lambda. And then we're going to have negative lambda times negative i is going to be positive i lambda. Is that, is that it? What did I do here? i times lambda is i lambda. Negative i lambda plus i lambda 
and then we're going to have uh, negative lambda times negative lambda will be plus lambda squared minus 2 equals 0. So if we clean this up, this is going to take this out. We have just lambda squared. 1 minus 2 will be minus 1 equals 0. So we know this is now difference of two squares. We have lambda minus 1 times lambda plus 1 equals 0, which means lambda has to be 1. So let's have two answers. Lambda 1 will be 1 and lambda 2 will be minus 1. So these are the two eigenvalues that we're going to use to find our eigenvectors. We're going to use them one after the other. So let's box this up. So now we need to use the second equation. The second equation is this one, that a minus lambda i multiplied by the eigenvector is equal to zero. Remember, the eigenvector is a column vector, it's just one of, just a column, okay? The eigenvector is a column vector and it has two rows, just as this one has two rows. So we're gonna say this. Let's go back again, make a box for this one. So we know that a minus lambda i multiplied by this is equal to zero. So we can structure it this way. It is basically a minus lambda i, which was what we got here, but it's, it's a matrix now. But we know what lambda is. So let's say for lambda one, equals one. We're going to go use one and replace here. We're going to have the matrix i minus one. We have one and here we have two and here we have negative i minus one. So this is the matrix we have and we're going to be multiplying it by a vector, a column vector. Now some people use x and y for the columns uh, for the column I would use x1 and x2. The reason why I like using x1, x2 is because you might be dealing with more than um, five rows or six rows. In that case, you can do x, y, z because once you get to z, you're stuck. You start thinking of what letters to use. So it's better to do one, two, three, four for longer. So I'm going to do x1, x2. So this is what your column vector is going to be. And here you're going to have this to be zero. So you write your zero as a column also. Now, what this means is when you multiply this, you're supposed to get zero, right? And when you multiply this, you're supposed to get zero. Now, the good thing about matrices is that you can easily do elimination. You just want to subtract one row from another row and be able to get zero somewhere. So what I would do is this looks a bit complicated. So what I'm going to do is I will multiply this by its conjugate. Okay, because we're trying to solve for x1 and x2. So I'm going to multiply this by its conjugate and see what happens. Just like multiplying equation one by five, equation two by whatever makes it easy for you to do elimination. Now, let's multiply this by its conjugate and see what happens. Now, let me say this, if you got the right eigenvalues, what you're going to see must always happen. If it doesn't happen, it means you didn't do the right thing. So we're going to multiply this by i plus 1. Let's do that math somewhere else, okay, because I just want to move on with this. x1, x2 equals 0, 0. So let's do the math somewhere. Um, i minus 1 multiplied by i plus 1. Remember, every time you multiply anything by its conjugate, it is basically the square of the first minus the square of the second, even when you're dealing with radicals. Okay, so if you multiply this out, you're going to end up with i squared minus 1 squared. What is i squared? Negative 1. So we got negative 2 here. So this is negative 2. We have 1. We have 2. We have negative i minus 1. If I, oh, by the way, this is not one. We have to multiply each, the entire row by i plus one. This is i plus one. Okay, so do you notice that if you add this to this, everything becomes zero on the other side. So choose which side you want to eliminate. Let me eliminate the bottom. So I'm going to add this to this so that this becomes zero. 
okay? So this is now zero, zero. You must get one of them canceling out the other one, okay? So it's either they're exactly the same. Remember, I could have switched the signs so that adding them together will be double, or that's why it is not invertible. That's why the determinant is equal to zero. Remember, if you get zero, zero in any matrix on a, on a complete row or a complete column, then it means the determinant is zero. That's why I said, if your lambda was correct, you must get this while trying to get this. So we have minus two x1 plus one plus i x2 equals zero. Minus two x1 plus one plus i, let me write it this way, x2 is equal to zero. Now remember, you're not going to find x1 or x2, no exact answer. What you need is just how one represents the other. Now here, I'm going to move, oh, this is the negative one. So let's move the negative one over there. You have one plus i x2 is equal to two x1. So because this one has the complex number attached to it, you wanna keep it on top. So divide both sides by two, you're gonna have one plus i over two x2 is equal to x1. We're done. Once you get one in terms of the other one, you have found your eigenvector. And what does your vector look like? You're gonna come here and say, when this crazy one is one, this one is going to be this. So you can easily go and say that your eigenvector, nobody likes fractions, but you can leave it that way or you can just multiply it. So we can go here and say that when this is one, this is going to be just one plus i over two when this is one. So you can say that your first eigenvector, let's write it here. So we can save space. V1 is equal to this vector, 1 plus i over 2, and the other component is 1. This is your first eigenvector. For lambda 2 equals, what was it, minus 1. I just go here and change everything. So this is going to be i. Instead of i minus 1, it's going to be i minus minus 1, which is i plus 1. And I have one, I have two, and here I have negative i plus one, negative i plus one. And so we're trying to um, solve this. So we're gonna have x1, x2 equals zero, zero. So we're gonna do the same thing again. We're going to multiply this by its conjugate, and this is gonna be i minus one, that's the conjugate of, the, you can choose to eliminate this no matter what, but it's just good to be consistent. Now, everything is gonna look similar until you get to the end. So here we have i um, plus one multiplied by i minus one. Well, remember it's always the square of the first minus the square of the second, and this is gonna give you i squared minus one squared, which is negative one minus one. Oh, it's still negative two. So that means this is going to become negative 2, and this is going to be i minus 1. And you notice that if you add the two columns together, the two rows together, one is going to eliminate the other. So it's more or less what you did before. It's just going to be slightly different. Okay, so what do we do? Remember, this is going to eliminate one of these, and then you can keep the, the one you want. So I'm going to add this to this. No, I'm going to add this to this to eliminate this. So I end up with a similar equation, which is negative 2x1, because it's going to become 0, 0. Let's get rid of that. So 0, 0. So negative 2x1 plus... Um, this is what we have, i minus 1, x2, i minus 1, x2 equals 0. Now, if we try to isolate, let's move this one over there. So you have i minus 1, x2 will be equal to 2x1, just like this one. And you see what our answer was there? So now, this is the crazy one. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and so I'm going to end up with i minus 1 divided by 2 will be representing my x1. So let's put a box here. We can say the second eigenvector, v2, will be equal to 
this guy. Let me write a giant one. It's gonna be i minus one over two, i minus one over two, and the bottom row is gonna be one. Now, if you don't like this fraction, you can multiply both by two, so that this is just i minus one, and this is two, and this is i plus one, and this is two. Or you can change this to 0 0.5, whatever you like. But those are your two eigenvectors. I wanna write them somewhere here. So, Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.